Hey everyone and welcome back to Ontario Cryptids. Today I'll be sharing one clip and two encounter stories. The clip is courtesy of Arms Family Homestead and the first story is courtesy of Phantom and Monsters website. The last story was submitted to me via an email by a viewer slash subscriber. But before we get started, I would like to add that if you have a story that you would like to share, then please forward your encounter stories directly to my email address. The main reason is some of you have left a story attached to a video in the comment section and recently I have had a video go viral and let me say it's hard to find your story since I have to comb through 1300 plus comments. Therefore, please send your encounter stories directly to ontariocryptids at gmail.com so I can share them with like-minded people. Now sit back and relax as we begin with today's clip. This first clip was uploaded to YouTube by Arms Family Homestead back in March 18th of 2018. The video was titled, Giant Creature Caught on Video, It's Running. This video is approximately four minutes long. In the video, this fellow had videotaped himself doing a control burn on his property. He had uploaded the video to his social media account. Unbeknownst to him, his video had captured a creature running upright through the blaze. He was made aware of it via another YouTuber. Now, I will play the, his original post and then loop the slow motion portion of the creature twice. I have edited the clip only to show these certain sections. If you want to see the clip in its entirety, I have left a link in the comments below. Now, let's take a look. So your mama told you not to play with fire, right? Well... Whoopsie. <laughs> oh yeah, lots of fire. Oh yeah, lots of fire. This first one takes place September of 2022. We're going to be going to McCurtain County, Oklahoma, and the nearest town is Cash. Again, this is courtesy of Phantoms and Monsters website. I'm a rancher in Oklahoma. Feral hogs are a problem in this area. I live north of the Red River on the Oklahoma side, close to West Cash Creek. One night, a friend called me to go pig hunting with them on one of his friend's fields that is getting destroyed by the pigs. Here in Oklahoma, it is legal to hunt pigs and coyotes with thermal scopes. Feral pigs are mainly active at night. We rode by the river, then walked possibly 150 yards and set up behind a fallen log. We sat and waited. It was a beautiful calm night and moonlight made visibility excellent, even without a thermal. After maybe 30 minutes, we heard this screaming sound. It was very loud. We looked at each other thinking it was possibly a cougar, but couldn't tell exactly where the sound was coming from. Then we heard a pig squeal to our right. In my head, I was thinking a big cat caught a pig. I looked through my thermal. I froze. An eight to ten foot tall creature had this pig in its hands. It wasn't a small pig, maybe 200 to 250 pounds, and it was squealing and fighting the strength and size of this thing. This thing was amazing. It had a long beard, dog-like snout, and hairy. But in my thermals, the image are white, so as far as the color, I'm not sure. As I was watching this thing, it literally ripped the pig in half with its bare hands, like a sheet of paper, and threw it on the ground. 
It started walking towards us. I almost crapped my pants. I froze out of fear. I couldn't pull the trigger. In my mind, I was telling my hand to pull the trigger, but I physically couldn't. Then, all of a sudden, a massive log, maybe 30 feet long, two to three foot round, flew over the tops of our heads towards this thing. I immediately jumped up and ran. My buddy was right behind me. We got on my ATV, I started it, and held my foot to the floor. We were traveling about 60 miles per hour. It'll run 80 miles per hour, but don't believe it was at the top speed yet. We busted through the gates to the pasture. I didn't even have a thought of getting out and opening it. We hit a ditch and went airborne and started to do a front roll, thinking this is going to hurt. The next thing I remember, we were sitting still, not moving, and not hurt. We were sitting next to my pickup and trailer. What the hell? We loaded it up and went to his house in silence. Not a word was said. We pulled up to his house and went inside. His wife asked, What's wrong with you guys? You look like you've seen a ghost. And where are your guns? I replied, I think we did, and it could keep our guns. I never even realized our guns were left laying by the stump, but I didn't care. I was glad to be out of there. After having a shower, I left for home with borrowed clothes. I live about 40 miles from him. Now... This is the creepiest part. When I parked the truck and walked to my front door, I noticed something in my yard. About 20 yards from the front door is that rifle I had left down at the river. Holy crap. That thing knows where I live. It's 40 miles away. Nothing has happened since then, but I don't go out at dark unless I absolutely have to, and I haven't been back to that creek or river since. I don't plan to, but I do feel something unnatural saved us that night. This next one takes place in 2022, I believe, in Calhoun County, Alabama, and the nearest town is Ohatchee. My name is Tom. It's okay to use my name if it helps to tell the story. The truth is, I've been having odd experience since I was young. Too many to list here. I will share the most recent two events since they are fresh in my mind and pretty good ones as far as this subject goes. My family and I moved to a very rural area along the Coosa River in eastern central Alabama. This area is famous for the bloody battle that happened here between the military and the native population. So, I did keep goats on the backside of the barn that is next to the house. We have to walk around the far side to access the goat pen. One evening, while inside the house, we heard the girl goat screaming for her life. My wife was quicker getting her shoes on, so she got there first. From the house, I heard her begin to scream. She was upset that our girl goat was laying there with massive holes bitten into her sides. Both sides had two large holes big enough to insert a large finger or thumb. So I knew right away that a dog didn't do it. Dog's teeth leave very small holes that can be very difficult to locate. And the placement of the tooth holes was so far down on her midsection that the size of the bite of this beast must have been 12 inches deep or more. There are bears here, but this is where the story gets strange. If it were a bear, it would have simply walked right through the skimpy chicken wire and left a wake of mangled fence. Whatever this was, it decided to use the walk-through gate. Goats have a habit of headbutting stuff, so I made the gate so that it would only open if you push on it from the outside. If the goat would attempt to push it from the inside, the gate would bump into a steel peg that I ponded into the ground to prevent the gate from opening if pushed from the inside. So once the scare was over, here is what I found. The steel peg had been pulled out of the ground. 
it was bent in half and jammed back into the ground a few feet away. The thing had hands for sure, if it was able to do that. That frightened me, and of course, the gate was pulled open and pushed up against the side of the barn, which took considerable force because it had to move a bit of earth along with it. As I stated, the fence wasn't designed to open this way. So what's the takeaway? Whatever it was had hands and was strong enough to bend steel and strong enough to push that gate the wrong way against the earth. It had a huge mouth with massive fangs. It was also considerate of human life. The rest of the story is that my wife ran into the goat pen while this thing was still in there. She saw it in almost complete darkness and assumed it was our black dog. She said it was slowly ambling towards the gate, but it was going so slowly and she was so mad that she actually pushed on it as to hurry it up. She said that the fur did not feel like our dog. It was extra long and fluffy, yet more coarse. It let her live, which makes me think it was a conscious thinking beast with respect for my wife's screams and anger. I can't really get her to talk about it with me. She wants not to believe what happened because the implications are severe. The next event wasn't scary, but definitely noteworthy. It was in the middle of a beautiful summer day, the sun was shining bright, and the internet goes out. We live remotely, so we have a satellite dish for our internet. We called a service technician for help. They came on out to help us. We walked outside to the satellite dish, and it was bent in half, like a taco. No trees had fallen. Nothing can run into it where it's located. I asked the technician if lightning could do that. He laughed and said no. Then he went on and told me that Sasquatch did it and that it happens all the time and that he replaced several just like mine. Mind blown. Sasquatch dislikes satellite signals. We switched to LTE internet since there is a cell tower in the closest town which is Ohachi, Alabama, in case anyone wants to look it up and see where this happened. I heard recently that another family in our area lost all five goats to something. Anyhow, our mama goat healed up fine and went on to have babies. I was worried about the pregnancy because of where the bite holes were, but all is well. Concerning other stories, I grew up in a very haunted house. I have seen spacecraft close up and far away like most people have. I've been visited by a blue sphere of light and many, many more completely unbelievable things. Let me know if you're interested in more stuff later. I'm glad to share with someone like you. My pop was in the Air Force. He had a few deathbed confessions. That stuff is good too. Much love and much respect from Alabama, Tom. Wow. Two great stories. Not Great's not even the word. Two amazing stories told today. And one pretty cool clip, if I do say so myself. Now, I want to start off with Tom's stories that he had. And Tom, yeah, I do want to hear your stories regarding the haunted house, the spacecraft, the blue sphere of of light and your father's stories, which I'm sure is going to be amazing since he was in the Air Force. In any case, let's get to your story at hand. Wow. So your wife bumped into a Sasquatch. Well, I shouldn't say bumped into a Sasquatch. Your wife pushed a Sasquatch out of the barn thinking it was your dog. Pretty amazing stuff. I am not surprised that she's traumatized and doesn't want to speak about it or speak of it. But I'm sure that that Sasquatch is still hanging around. And you're right. It does. It did seem to have compassion for a human life because it it didn't turn around and harm your wife, but instead left. And the matter of which it left seemed remorseful. The fact that it was it didn't get up and run away 
uh, in, a, a, in a speedy fashion, it was slowly ambling towards the gate. It was in no hurry to move, so by her shoving it to get out and thinking that it was your dog was pretty amazing. Tom, I can't wait to hear your other encounters that you've had around your area. Now, in the other story that we had, it sounds like these two hunters were saved by a Sasquatch. I mean, what else can pick up a 30 foot long log that's two to three inches in diameter? <laughs> I don't know anything else that could do that. I'd be curious to think what you guys think about this one because I do believe the Sasquatch did save them from this dogman. Comment below. I'd be curious if you guys think the same or feel the same way. And lastly, I find that last clip to be very telling. Who would put on, if this was fake, that is, who would put on a suit and run through a fire? Now, this was a controlled burn on somebody's property. But if you were wearing a, a suit that was made out of synthetic material, oh my God, that would go up like quickly. And I didn't see that creature on fire, but I did see that creature bouncing around to get out of the fire. Pretty interesting clip. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. And again, if these stories reminded you of an encounter that you may have had and would like to share, then please forward your stories to ontariocryptids at gmail.com. I will be honored to share your story on this channel. Thank you all for listening until the end. I truly appreciate it. Please hit the like button on your way out and smash the subscribe button if you're new to my channel. Have a great weekend and I hope to see you all next week right here on Ontario Cryptids.